Advanced VG2 is one of the last mainline fighting games in the long-running Variable Geo series. While known for being a bishoujo fighter, much like its contemporaries Asuka 120% or Metal and Lace, the once arrow gay fighter has also expanded into OVAs, text adventures, and visual novels. AVG2 is, and this is important, completely devoid of any erotic content and honestly pretty much any fan service in general. So not only is this the most competitively playable release in the franchise, but it's also the most tame. I will not be alone in this primer, as I am joined by... Sleep Mode! Hey, that's me! And we are going to teach you everything you need to know about playing Advanced Variable Geo 2 competitively. While net play for this game is currently a bit... What do you mean? Rollback? So, Netplay exists? Which is great for us, because AVG2 is an incredibly fun game that's both easy to pick up and very rewarding to play. It has fast-paced gameplay with a big focus on aerial exchanges and a roster of characters packed with awesome bullshit like whiff animationless command grabs and zero frame supers. As is customary, our sources for this information come from a combination of the Super Combo Wiki for this game, the corresponding Japanese wiki, and our own individual testing. AVG2 is a four-button game, Light Punch, Light Kick, Heavy Punch, and Heavy Kick. While not exactly like a Magic series, normals can be chained in this game both on the ground and, more importantly, in the air. Chains can be performed even on whiff, and some attacks that are normally not chainable can be part of a chain. Because of this, it would be wise to check the wiki, as chains and links are much more diverse than just a simple magic series across the cast. You can air block, but you cannot air block any grounded attacks. While blocking on the ground, you can guard cancel with back, down, back, down, and a button, but this is different from a standard alpha counter. Guard cancels in AVG2 do not always have invincibility, and you have a unique guard cancel attack for each button, meaning that knowing all of your character's guard cancel options is very important to properly escaping pressure this way. On top of this, guard cancels can sometimes just be a standard light punch, which may seem weak and useless, but in reality, you can chain off this like a regular attack and combo the opponent, sometimes to the tune of huge damage for a guard cancel. To super jump, press any down input before pressing any up input. You know, like any other game with super jumps. Super jumps are stupid important in AVG2, however, because not only do you jump higher when super jumping, but you also travel multiple times further than a normal jump. This makes super jumps a really important approach tool, as many characters can super jump with a super active rising light attack and then air chain into a heavy attack on the way down. You can also get a super jump by jumping out of a dash, unless your name is Ayako, Elirin, or Manami. Of those characters, Ayako and Manami also cannot slide jump, which is a combination dash super jump that's lightning fast and goes nearly full screen. It's performed by double tapping down forward and then hitting up, effectively giving you a dash jump and a regular super jump at the same time. I cannot stress enough how important super jumping is you will need to get used to approaching neutral with this in mind. This game is not an air dasher, but it is very much an aerial focused game, as fully invincible anti-airs are exceedingly rare and you can score huge juggle conversions from air to air exchanges. Let's lightning round the rest of the minor mechanics. Four dashes can be stopped in place with a back input, unless your name is Satomi, Minami, Ayako, or Kaori. Characters get a running heavy punch while dashing. Some of these are unique command normals, and Ayako does it with Heavy Kick instead. Most backdashes are throw invincible, and Tamayo can actually cancel her backdash by hitting forward. Any attack that is low enough will OTG the opponent and pop them up for a continued combo. However, depending on the setup and move, the timing can be either free 99 or quite specific. You only get one OTG per combo, but after OTGing the opponent can only be knocked down, not air reset. However, Ellerin has a corner throw OTG setup that leads to an air reset mix-up, so I don't even know anymore. Press down as you hit the ground to quick rise. Quick rises are based on backdash animations, so their effectiveness can wane depending on the character. 
some even being punishable if the opponent is absolutely on top of it. And finally, in true old game form, you can soften throws with left or right plus heavy punch at the right moment of throw to have the damage, an air reset instead of being knocked down. Also in true old game form though, the window is one frame, so good fucking luck. So off the bat, there are input shortcuts for special moves. Specifically, diagonal inputs are not necessary for special move inputs, meaning that quarter circle forward specials can simply be performed as just down and then forward plus a button. There are pros and cons to this, as the ease of use of this particular command can be overruled by accidentally getting specials, so make sure to be aware of that. We are still going to put the full notation on screen, but just remember that the shortcut exists. There are also EX special moves in AVG2, and they can be performed in two different ways, either by the normal input and two buttons, or by doubling the motion and then hitting one button. However, when cancelling special moves into an EX move, only the double input method will be accepted. The game will not allow super cancelling with the two button input for EX moves. One of the most important mechanics in the game is the zero frame unblockable. Almost every character in the game has either an EX move or a super that will hit instantly after the super flash, meaning that if you were not blocking before the super flash, your ass is now getting hits. You can, however, input a reversal during the super flash if you have one that can save yourself from that situation. Zero frame unblockables have significant use both offensively and defensively, so not only is it important to know what your character's zero frame unblockable is, it's worth knowing what your opponent's zero frame unblockable is as well. As mentioned above, not all of the cast have zero frame unblockables. Jun lacks one, but she has a command grab super, I think she will be fine. And Minami lacks one, and she will not be fine, I guess it sucks to suck. Sorry Minami, back to the bottom of the tier list with you. There is a situational instance where zero frame unblockables become true unblockables, hitting the opponent even if they were blocking before the super flash. For this to be possible, you have to do a zero frame unblockable while in lower drawing priority, which means that if the two characters are close enough to overlap, your character is drawn in the background. Usually the player who attacked last will have high drawing priority, but there are certain moves on hit or whiff that force lower drawing priority. If you perform a zero frame unblockable while in LDP, all zero frame unblockables, with the exception of Raimi's, Tamao's, and one of Yuka's, will override the opponent's blocking animation and become a true unblockable attack. While this is very situational, it is worth understanding as this can blow up an opponent who's otherwise prepared to deal with a zero frame unblockable. Finally, characters will have secret special moves. These are special moves that have some attributes of the EX version applied to the meterless special attack. These vary wildly, some having super flash, some not, some being done when you have less than one bar, some taking one bar if you have meter. They are not applied universally across the cast. Outside of Kyoko's secret omaneshi, Ayako's second secret moxpin, and maybe Chiho's secret hiengeki, most secret moves do not meaningfully affect the game, so they are worth knowing about, but they shouldn't be a priority in your mental stack. While having access to grounded and anti-air command grabs, Kyoko is much more of a pressure and set play demon than a grappler. With one of the few aerial 4 chains and disgusting Okizeme off of her EX Senzaka, Kyoko can dominate the skies and convert into scary left rights. While successful set plays off of EX Senzaka can build meter well and run her opponent into the ground, her grounded options are much less effective. Poor grounded normals, and incredibly few grounded chains make it difficult for Kyoko to get started when her feet are planted on terra firma. As mentioned above, Kyoko basically has a magic series in the air, able to chain all four of her fantastic air normals together. 
Jump Heavy Kick in particular is a disgusting air button and can instant overhead crouching opponents. While this is crazy powerful for being in the skies, Kyoko is much worse on the ground, having very little in terms of ground chains, needing links to do any of her ground confirms, and because of this, her best grounded tool is probably standing light kick due to its range, something many of her buttons sorely lack. Her best guard cancels are light punch and light kick, for airborne and grounded opponents respectively. These buttons best allow her to convert into omaneshi and score a combo, however these give her both heavy attacks instead of light attacks, the way most of the cast gets, so be warned that they are a little slower to start up. Omaneshi is a two-part confirmed tool for Kyoko, giving her an elbow strike that is stationary for light punch and moves slightly forward on heavy punch. Pressing punch again will give you her otokeshi follow-up, which is always the same strength as the initial omaneshi, so you'll want to use heavy punch omaneshi for combos. EX omaneshi is her zero frame unblockable, and it lets both attacks rip automatically. Secret omaneshi is one of the most useful secret moves in the game. While it has a smaller hitbox and does literally one point of damage, it builds stupid meter, a quarter bar on whiff and a half bar on hit. With how meter turns Kyoko online, this becomes a very relevant move as you can do it even after building one bar. Do be careful though, as one of the downsides of secret moves is that they usually overlap with other special moves, and in this case, if you are too close, it could overlap and prioritize her Jinchoge command grab. Shakunage is a set of three catch counters. Light punch covers jumping normals and overheads, heavy punch catches grounded mids, and light plus heavy punch also catches grounded mids, but will side swap. While it is a bummer that there's no low catch option, any successful Shukunage will launch for a jungle follow up. Sazanka is a leaping anti air grab. While it is unblockable by virtue of being a grab, it lacks any invincibility that would make it for being a reliable anti air. Where it shines is being used in combos, as it grants a hard knockdown that allows Kyoko to run her set play. EX Senzaka is the star of the show, and you can super cancel Omaneshi into EX Senzaka, then do a dashing super jump into a jumping heavy kick. Depending on when you time the jumping heavy kick, it will either hit left or right, creating an ambiguous mix-up that, if successful, gives you a healthy combo that can build enough meter back to possibly allow you to run another Omaneshi into EX Senzaka setup. There's also Secret Senzaka, but it's pretty much just Heavy Kick Senzaka with EX Senzaka's height. It can also overlap with Jinchoge, so be careful while using it. Jinchoge is Kyoko's command grab, which is great for helping her open up down backing opponents and can score an OTG combo in the corner. What you should be careful about is if you Jinchoge from a dash, you might accidentally get Senzaka, or if you have meter, Hosenka, so it's safer to try and tick throw with this instead. Hosenka is Kyoko's only super, and it's a one frame command grab that is unjumpable after the super flash. You actually get a follow up after this, as Omaneshi will whiff, but the Otokeshi will hit, and you can super cancel after that if you want to dump more meter on top. Kyoko struggles to play neutral. She lacks any meaningful long range options and has very few ground chains, meaning that she can have a bit of a linear approach with how much better her air approach is. That said, when she gets in the opponent's face, Kyoko can really start to tear things up. Between her command grabs and beefy combo damage, she can make hits count and scare the opponent into an action with proper reads. All of this is bolstered if she has meter, allowing her to turn into one of the most terrifying set play characters in the game. Kyoko can take work, but that work will be rewarded. Shiho is a ninja, and comes with all the typical ninja things you'd expect in a fighting game. Great mobility, crafty mix-ups, and wild combo potential with her Genagin, I mean, the uh, Zanagin. Her downsides are also what you would expect, as she has some of the lowest defense values in the game, and outside of her quite demanding Zanagin combo routes, her damage isn't particularly high. 
Chiho has a few additional tools in the air compared to other characters, as not only is she one of the few characters in the game with an air throw, she's also the only character in the game with a wall jump. She's no slouch on the ground either, having a down forward heavy kick slide, a third strike style overhead on light punch plus heavy punch, and more command launches than you can shake a stick at. Her regular normals are pretty outrageous too, being among the fastest and with some like her standing light punch being quite plus on block. Her light kick guard cancel is a unique one, because when you perform it normally, you just get standing heavy kick, but if you hold forward during the guard cancel freeze frames, you'll instead get forward heavy kick, which is the more rewarding option due to its combo potential. It's still not the greatest guard cancel around, but of her available options, it's going to be her best bet most of the time. Shisen Ken is Chiho's fireball, and it travels at the perfect speed for her. Light Punch Shisen Ken is slow enough that it covers enough space, allowing her to advance behind it and set up aggravating pressure strings when the opponent is cornered. The EX version throws three Shisen Kens at the same time, which truthfully isn't all that useful. You have better things to be spending your meter on. The secret version of Shisen Ken is just her EX fireball, but she only throws one of them instead of three. This can be useful if you really need something a bit faster and more durable in a fireball war, but outside of that it's not really worth remembering. Hiengeki is Chiho's combo ender, and whoa, what a combo ender it is. She burn knuckles her way across the screen, bringing the opponent with her, which gives her vital corner carry to start running her mix-ups on a fool. The EX version is her zero frame unblockable too, so getting a proper reversal off like this can easily turn the tides of a match for her if she's on the back foot. Secret Hiengeki is a higher damage variant of her heavy punch Hiengeki, but she can't cancel into it. While this is a bit more situational than the regular Hiengeki, it's still really useful for stuff like squeezing out extra damage off an air to air confirm. Endakusatsu is a command grab with an almost wrecker like series of follow ups. Izuna Otoshi adds on extra damage with an Izuna drop and leaves the opponent close to you, and the final hit, Senshujin, is a kick that adds a little bit more damage at the end and knocks the opponent further away. How far you go in the command grab sequence is dictated by what kind of damage or setup you're looking for, but most of the time you'll want to just stick with Endakusatsu as it gives you a full air to air combo afterwards. Zanajin is what makes Chiho what she is. While it's easy to compare to Yun's Genajin, Zanajin is far closer to Zero's Sorgenmu, being a shadow super that massively expands Chiho's combo abilities far past anyone else in the game. She does lose access to her normal and command grabs while in Zanajin, but since she can loop Zanajin combos with multiple activations, as well as set up unblockables with meaty overheads like Light Punch plus Heavy Punch and a falling jumping heavy kick into a well-timed crouching light kick, I think she's going to be just fine with not being able to throw. Now to add further confusion, Chiho actually does have a Genajin. However, her Genajin is not the Genajin you're thinking of, Zanajin is the Genajin you're thinking of, except that's actually Sogenmu. Make sense? Hell no, what the fuck? Anyway, Chiho's Genajin doubles her movement speed for a while, which does see some use from time to time as a way to help Chiho approach or convert from awkward ranged hits, though it's much more niche in that usage than the mighty Zanajin. Shin Kugazan is Chiho's last super, and it is not an install. Instead, it's a lightning fast attack that tracks the opponent and flies in with a downward strike. While the applicability of this super is very real, it costs 2 bars to perform and does the lowest damage of any super in the game. There's also a glitch associated with it where blocking and guard cancelling the super deals an insane amount of damage to Chiho and likely leads to her straight up dying, so generally there are better ways to spend your meter than on this. Chiho is a rushdown demon with great tools to establish herself in neutral, and thanks to Hiengeki when she converts, she can take it all the way to the wall and put the fear of God in her opponent's heart. She's hurt by having a low defense value and the lowest attack value in the game, but she has all of the tools to properly rise above those shortcomings. She has some of the highest execution demands in the game, as successfully looping Zanajin combos is nothing to sneeze at, but the reward is one of the best characters available full stop.
Tamo is the little baby version of Yuka, which is a shame because the way that plays out is that she is a significantly worse version of her, lacking the tools that make Yuka as good as she is. While she's not the worst character in the game and still on the whole pretty playable, there are aspects of her kit that are so obviously built with comedy in mind that she becomes a bit of a joke character. Strong play can keep her competitively relevant still, but it's a struggle for the young one. Tamal doesn't have particularly good normals, with most of them being pretty stubby. Among her best would be Standing Light Punch and Standing Heavy Punch, the latter of which has a ridiculous 3 frames of startup. In the air she gets a little better, with Jumping Light Kick being a good cross-up tool and Jumping Heavy Kick being a pretty healthy jump in normal all around. Unlike a lot of other characters who usually have one of their crouching normals as their OTG pickup tool, Tamao has it on a command normal with down forward heavy punch. Tamao also has a unique running attack with running heavy punch and it's hilariously bad. Her leaping headbutt is not an overhead and her face slide afterwards is not a low, it's just comedy all around. While Tamao does have her DP as one of her guard cancels, we'll soon see why we aren't going to be using that. Instead, her light punch guard cancel works best as it gives you that 3 frame standing heavy punch. However, we do need to note here that this button will whiff on Tamao, Satomi, and Saki while they're crouching, so if you try to escape their low pressure with a guard cancel, you're not going to have much luck with this one. Kikodan is much like Yuka's, but with one specific, very Dan Hibiki-esque flavour to it. It has a set travel distance. But thankfully, unlike Dan, it is still mostly going to work the way you want it to. EX Kikodan is just a beefier, more damaging fireball, nothing particularly special. Sword Yugeki is also much like Yuka's, but with one crippling omission. The invincibility frames. Now, she does have a little bit of a hurt box lowering to her startup, which helps, but Tamao's Sword Yugeki is strictly inferior as an anti air compared to Yuka's. The EX version is her zero frame unblockable, which is good, but the move also serves as her main combo tool. EX Sword Yugeki launches the opponent so high that she can link as many of them together as she has meter for and end it with a link into Heavy Punch Sword Yugeki. Secret Sword Yugeki takes the Super Flash and Zero Frame Unblockable properties of EX Sword Yugeki, but with the Juggle Launch of Heavy Punch Sword Yugeki. This secret move will overlap with her Command Grab if done too close, and if you do it when you have meter, it'll still use the meter. Kusen Kyaku is perhaps the most done Hibiki move that Tamao has, being either a single kick or triple kick Tatsu, very much in the vein of Danku Kyaku. The single hit light kick version is pretty useful as it's fast and short enough that you can whiff it in front of the opponent and throw them before they can respond to the situation. EX Kusen Kyaku isn't worth much, but it is absolutely hilarious as it has Tamao's face slide attack as the last hit of the sequence. This will not hit you if the kicks hit, but if you can somehow perform the impossible and make all of the kicks whiff and the face slide connect, it will launch for a combo. Secret Kusen Kyaku looks to literally just be Heavy Kick Kusen Kyaku, but with a Super Flash. Same with Secret Sword Yugeki, it overlaps and prioritizes with her Command Grab, as well as costing one bar of meter if you already have it. Poko Poko Midare Uchi is a Command Grab, and thank goodness for that, because she needs a powerful tool like this. With no whiff animation and no overlapping specials that would come out, this is a welcome addition to Tamao's game. If you follow up the input with an additional punch or kick, Tamao will have a different ender for it. Her punch ender is preferred as it does a little less damage, but gives a bit of an easier OTG pickup compared to the other follow-ups. Lightning Crash is Tamao's only super, but it does wonders for her. A gigantic laser beam that she can combo into, which does great damage, and is pretty useful for chipping out her opponent. It also leaves her at plus 4 on block, meaning that throwing it out there is far from a death sentence if it doesn't hit. Tamao being a purposely inferior version of Yuka does put a ceiling on how good of a character she can be, though she still works with a skilled player and you can get wins with her, 
she subtracts a lot from Yuka's solid Shoto archetype and outside of a decent command throw adds little back. But if for some reason you're drawn to Shoto's but don't really vibe with Yuka, Tamo is waiting in the wings for you to pick. Yuka is as much of a Shoto as you can get in this game. While she may seem a little vanilla in a game with such bonkers characters, Yuka is still a very solid all-around choice and she has a unique advantage over most of the cast. Her Shoyugeki DP has real invincibility to it. She does share some grime with other characters, having two unique attributes to her aerial approach, giving her powerful options for both being in the air and against those in the air against her. Yuka is the only character to have both an aerial 4-chain like Kyoko and an aerial guard break like Raimi, with her J2 heavy kick. Outside of that, she's just kinda, like, good. Her buttons are not anything to write home about, but they're all solid tools that help her cover space in effective ways. I know that's boring, but that's kinda Yuka in a nutshell. This one's easy though. Yuka's heavy punch guard cancel is her light sorugeki. While it's not as wicked as if it was her heavy version you were getting, Guard cancelling into a DP with invincibility until the active frames will still get you where you want to be. If you are looking for damage, her light punch guard cancel gives her standing heavy punch, which will turn into close heavy punch if within range. Kikudan is a Hadouken. You know how this is used. EX Kikudan is a special that has one frame startup and is air unblockable, so it can be worth meter spent depending on the situation. Sorugeki is your standard invincible dragon punch, but that's really important in a game like AVG2. Invincible reversals like this are only invincible until the startup across the board, but Yuka's heavy punch Sorugeki is the only one where the invincibility extends past the active frames. This is a sacred cow as it allows her to actually have a legitimate answer where almost anyone else could not. Her EX Sorugeki is also a zero frame unblockable and does great damage. Ida Tensoku is the Tatsu but not Tatsu that all Shoto clones of the era needed to have and it's, yeah, yeah. You could dash this forward before performing her standing heavy kick and it's kind of all it has. All versions are quite punishable and while EX Ida Tensoku has one frame startup, there's no world where you would want to be using that over a version of Sorugeki. It has its worth for combo conversions, but nothing else otherwise to write home about. Now where did Tamayo learn that lightning crash from? Kyukoku Kikudan is a massive laser beam that does everything lightning crash does, but is a rare exception where Tamayo's version is better. Tamayo gets to be plus on block with her laser beam, but Yuka does not. Kiryu Itatengeki is a pseudo Ranbu attack that while not a zero frame unblockable, only has one frame of startup. This is super useful for converting off air juggles as it connects with all of its hits on airborne opponents. Outside of Surugeki, Yuka lacks a lot of flash. No crazy cool normals and a standard Shoto clone style you would come to expect from the era. But do not let that convince you that she is ineffective. She has tools more powerful than most and with her well-rounded skill set can easily control the game, be that in establishing neutral, holding down the air approach, or pressuring the opponent in the corner. A very, very good character with just a little bit of fun stuff to keep her strong. Much like how Saki can get away with pressing only the heavy kick button, Satomi's heavy punch can debatably play the game for you. Both standing and crouching heavy punch are wicked fast buttons that have great hitboxes and range to them. This, alongside her down forward heavy kick slide, allow her to bully the opponents. Eventually, due to frustration, the opponent will want to jump, in which case they now have to deal with the greatest anti-air in the game, Satomi's EX Kaizen. Because her base gameplay is so strong, she is one of the least meter hungry characters in the game, almost ensuring that she has EX Kaizen on deck. Just press heavy punch, I'm not even joking. Standing Heavy Punch is a sensational button and it comes out in 5 motherfucking frames. Like, do you see this shit? She can also get this out of dash, making her a moving wall of hitbox. 
The only downside to standing heavy punch is that it can be low profiled. So thankfully, crouching heavy punch is nearly as good. Lastly, down forward heavy kick is a slide that can low profile a lot of attacks. These buttons are the cornerstone of Satomi's dominant footsie game, able to both bully the opponent at range and quickly whiff punish any of the opponent's attacks. Her guard cancels are well rounded, but lacking in a solid catch all answer. You would think having heavy kick guard cancel be light Kazan would punch the ticket, but with its stubbier hitbox and slower startup, it's much less consistent in breaking out of a combo as opposed to anti airing someone. Because of this, you really need to have all her guard cancels in mind. Light punch guard cancel gives the best potential reward, light kick guard cancel is more situationally consistent, and heavy punch guard cancel gives you light Goku Ensho, trading damage for a knockdown. Kaienzan is an anti-air attack with invincibility on it until active frames. This allows her to reliably knock opponents out of the air when they try to escape pressure by taking to the skies. EX Kaienzan, however, is the greatest anti-air in the entire game. The range on normal Kaienzan is a little stubby, but EX Kaienzan is inescapable. If you are in the air, then you are getting hit. This is so much so that even if your opponent jumps in a manner to cross you up, EX Kainzan will still hit and warp them back in front of you. This warping is important because if you catch someone out of the air with EX Kainzan, you can link a second EX Kainzan afterwards, dealing massive damage. Goku Ensho is hilarious. Someone looked at Satomi and said, give her a nearly unreactable overhead. You want to have Light Kick Goku Ensho on deck to pop the opponent anytime they think about crouching. EX Goku Ensho has awesome startup and recovery, and it's her main meter damage confirm, especially since she can link off of it for an extension. Shinku Karatakewari sucks. Satomi leaps in the air and comes down with a fiery karate chop, and I don't know where you would ever use this move. The EX version is very funny, however, as she is active during her jump arc. This means that off of a juggle, it's possible, but not likely, that you can get big damage by using Satomi herself as an attack. Oho is another neutral tool for a character that already has awesome neutral. This allows her to reflect back projectiles, which is just such a cool thing to give a character who already smokes the mid-range. There is a strike attached to it, but it's kind of poopy and we don't need to think about it. As if Satomi was somehow lacking in utility, Oho is so quick that she can use it to cancel the recovery of her moves like down forward heavy punch to get bigger swag combos and better meter gain. Hisatsu Kyoku Shinken is a dashing Ranbu super. Nothing particularly out of the normal, but it does great damage and if you have a spare 2 bars lying around, it is a great cash out for Satomi. Satomi is one of the strongest characters in AVG2. Not only does she have some of the most dominant neutral tools in the game, she has the best meter DP in the game as well, and she gets a wicked standing overhead. While her game plan is very simple due to these skills, there is no denying how wildly effective she can make it be. Manami is an annoying hit and run character, which has always proven to be a solid character design not at all filled with major design flaws. Her best attributes are her forward dash that can low profile, and her tiny hurtbox which can make some combos drop on her, but outside of that she is hurting. No zero frame unblockable, lowest defense value in the game, god awful range on her normals, can't super jump out of dash, if you want to play the cat girl, then you are gonna have to work for it. Manami literally does not have any normals worth talking about. I guess her jumping heavy punch has the ambiguous cross up body splash thing going on, but like otherwise, all of her buttons are embarrassingly stubby and require breaking the common decency of entering someone's personal space to hit with them. She also has awful guard cancels. Thanks to effective guard cancels being fast normals you can combo from, Manami has a rotten time actually being able to guard cancel and get her normal to connect. This makes her best option heavy kick guard cancel, which gives her light Goro Goro attack, but because that doesn't knock down, she needs to super cancel afterwards to not open herself up to be punished. Neko Rocket Punch has Manami throw one of her cat paws out on a string and draw it back. 
This can hit the opponent on the way out and on the way back in, but it sucks because it's dummy unsafe and Minami is clumsy and deals one point of damage to herself. The light version starts up faster, the heavy version goes further, and she has not a EX version, but a third version that uses both buttons like an EX that would give her the light startup and the heavy range. It's very specific, but it is possible to make Neko Rocket Punch unblockable. Because the attack range extends past proximity blocking range, and it's not considered a projectile, it's possible to space it far enough away where the opponent cannot activate their blocking animation and block the attack. Goro Goro Attack is Monami's best tool. Light Goro Goro can be used as a movement tool the same way Light Blanca Ball is, thanks to its short travel distance and low whiff recovery. It is also considered airborne at frame 1, making it avoid throws and making her air reset when hit. However, it is not considered an air attack, it is still tagged as grounded, meaning it is air unblockable. Light Goro Goro does leave the opponent standing on hit, meaning it's best to super cancel it or use the heavy version that gives knockdown. EX Goro Goro attack may be air blockable thanks to its arcing aerial path, but it's Manami's best damage for combos, so get familiar with it. Goro Goro Attack 2 is another Blanca Ball staple, having Manami spin briefly before launching in an arc and range dependent on the strength used. While the space it controls can be good, it sadly does not cause knockdown. Instead of getting an EX Goro Goro Attack 2, the EX input gives you Banzai Attack, a Blanca Ball with her neutral jump heavy punch animation. The hitbox on this is slightly better than Goro Goro 1 and has lower body invincibility, so it can be a strong mid-range tool. Neko Choto Rambu is Manami's command grab, and by golly did she need it. Thankfully she can use this to score easy juggle follow-ups, adding a much necessary layer to her game. Gotsui Neko Rocket Punch is a bit of a strange super. It's a massive Neko Rocket Punch that has a set distance it travels. This means it's very easy for it to miss out on damage if spaced incorrectly, and it won't fully connect on airborne opponents. That may make it seem bad, but if you can get this to land on its sweet spot, it deals gargantuan damage. Ultra Goro Goro Attack is Goro Goro 2 with the added benefit of being unblockable. You can hold down the buttons to charge the attack, which increases the damage. You will need to set this up so you get charge time, because without charge, Ultra Goro Goro deals pitiful damage. While not unplayable, Manami is easily the worst character in the game. She lacks a well-rounded toolkit with many of the benefits the rest of the cast are privy to. Every battle with Manami is an uphill one, but not an impossible one. She still has tricks, she still has damage, and she can still score wins. But with terrible normals and the worst defense value in the game, you will have to be the better player to advance in bracket using Manami. As we all know, the highest tier in Maslow's hierarchy of needs is being treated badly by an evil woman and oh my god. Saki can and will play the game purely by pressing heavy kick as her standing heavy kick is so good that it whitens your teeth and fixes your hairline over time. With her awesome heavy kick pokes and damaging conversions, Saki can control the neutral game with ease. However, that's kind of all she can do. With her game plan being so linearly focused on big buttons and fatty meter dumps that when you're outside of those instances or lacking meter, she can end up struggling a bit. Like the Ying to Satomi's Yang, Saki's standing heavy kick is an unbelievably powerful button. A special cancelable poke with incredible horizontal range and pretty impressive vertical reach as well. Everything else attached to the heavy kick button is also wild. Jumping Heavy Kick is a beefcake air button that's active for approximately 4 years, Crouching Heavy Kick is a sweep with 4 goddamn frames of startup, and her Forward Heavy Kick command normal is a bit slow but connects from downtown and chains into her standing Heavy Punch or Crouching Heavy Kick. Saki would honestly have a pretty terrible selection of card cancels if it weren't for how her Heavy Punch guard cancel works. Her Heavy Punch Guard Cancel gives you Light Ren, her Command Grab. However, if you Guard Cancel outside of Light Ren's Command Grab range, you'll gain a little invincibility but have no animation as Ren doesn't have a whiff animation. Proper use of this can lead to scoring serious punishes of a well-timed Guard Cancel. 
Tetsu is Saki's main combo tool, a dashing swipe that allows her to fill out her confirms and combos. With neither version being safe on block, you'll mainly want to use heavy Tetsu when possible, especially since she can get an OTG pickup off of it. The EX version is invincible until its first active frame, so you can get some defensive utility out of it. There's also a secret Tetsu, which seems like the best of both worlds, having the damage of the heavy version and the invincibility of the EX version. However, you can't cancel into secret Tetsu, so you need to throw it out raw and it'll overlap with Ren if you're in grab range. Gyo is an advancing flip kick, which is somewhat useful for approach in neutral as the light version is invincible to lows from frame 1. Gyo can be a little bit difficult to punish, but since it's not technically safe, it doesn't have the greatest risk reward to be throwing out a neutral often. EX Dio, however, is a fantastic juggle ender thanks to its damage, and if you have the necessary lack of meter, Secret Dio is even better thanks to its high hit count and low damage scaling. Sen is a strange cobbled together auto combo of standing light punch into forward heavy punch, but this time around forward heavy punch is actually an overhead. You get more hits out of the heavy version, which can help with super cancelling from it. Shoku is the vertical companion to Dio, an upwards flip kick anti-air that has some uh, problems. The hitbox isn't great, the horizontal range is pretty crap, and it's invincible until startup, which you'd think is a good thing, but with such a long startup, it actually kind of hampers its effectiveness and makes it a really situational combo tool. EX Shoku, on the other hand, rules, as it's a zero frame unblockable, and if you tag someone out of the air with it, Saki can link a second EX Shoku afterwards. Ren is a one frame command grab with no whiff animation. That sounds really cool, and it is, but thanks to the overlapping commands, a whiffed Ren is likely to give you Tetsu, which isn't great. Both light and heavy versions of Ren have one frame startup and the same range, so make sure you stick to the heavy version for increased damage. There is also an EX Ren, which does respectable damage, but still has the same range as the normal versions, and honestly, Saki wants to save her meter for other tools. Saki has some of the best supers in the game, with the first being Homura. This massive fire pillar does great damage and is air unblockable, making for a juggle ender or a devastating anti-air. What makes Homura notable, however, is that it can be performed in the air and, when done so, has a greatly decreased startup time. This allows Saki's aerial game to be much scarier if she has meter on deck to threaten with a possible Homura. And if you can believe it, Homura may be the worst of her two supers because the other is Mizuchi. Mizuchi is purely a combo ender, but it's what makes Saki the hard hitting character she is. Thanks to its dealing fixed damage, Mizuchi can chunk the opponent's life bar and turn any confirm into a drastically different game. Saki loves controlling the game and making her opponents suffer for any mistakes. Her neutral presence and ability to confirm into monstrous damage makes her a nightmare to play against, if she has meter. Tragically, Saki's game plan is very meter hungry and with dodgy mix-ups and inconsistent defensive tools, Saki can come off as a little one note unless her best options are online. Still a dangerous character, but one that has a bit of swing room in her effectiveness. The undisputed queen of vibes, Ayako and her sensational idol animation can turn the neutral game into her own personal dance floor. She excels at spacing out the opponent and controlling the pace of the game with her great buttons. She does lack the type of combo conversions or damage other characters can enjoy, but she can still hold her own and has a couple tricks up her sleeve, like corner combos off of her normal throw regardless of if you tech hit, and a unique glitch that allows her to freely guard cancel in the air. If you want some, come get some. That's the wall up there, brother. Standing light kick holds down so much of the neutral for Ayako. It's huge. It chains into itself. It cancels into Ravestorm. It rules. Her other star button is standing heavy punch, which both anti-airs and launches, making jumping against Ayako a dangerous idea. Ayako also gets a stupid corner combo off normal grab, 
regardless of if it hits or if it's softened because she has a route for either. This gives her a wildly scary throw game she can mix in when opponents have their back against the wall. Ayako's light guard cancels are different depending on if she's stand blocking or crouch blocking, meaning that your best option when standing is light kick and when you're crouching is light punch because both of these options can lead to a rave storm confirm. Thanks to a character specific glitch, Ayako can also guard cancel when air blocking. She guard cancels into all of her air normals, but most importantly her heavy punch guard cancel will turn into air throw if done within distance, which is a ridiculous tool for breaking someone's air to air pressure. Mock Spin looks like an anti-air, and I, I guess it is, but it's not as effective as you want it to be. It lacks the invincibility and priority to emphatically knock people out of the air. What's more interesting is what happens afterwards. Light Mock Spin ends with Aiko in the air able to perform air actions, and Heavy Mock Spin will drill back down afterwards. The Heavy Mock Spin follow-up will whiff if the upwards attack initially hits. EX Mock Spin is a zero frame unblockable, so it gets a lot better offensively and defensively. Here's where things get fucked up. Ayako has three secret versions of Moxpin. Secret Moxpin 1, Super Flash aside, this seems to just be Heavy Kick Moxpin. What's curious is that you will only ever get the Super Flash to happen once. Every other time you do Secret Moxpin 1, there will be no Super Flash, but the after images will be there to confirm that you have done this version. Also, sometimes the after images change color. You will not get the first Super Flashback until you choose another character. Repeatedly playing matches with Ayako will not return that first Super Flash. That's so stupid and esoteric and meaningless that I still don't know what to do with that information. And I'm the one that discovered it. The second secret mock spin is the most important one. This gives mock spin the height of EX or heavy kick but has Aiko not do the down spiral attack. This means that like Light Kick's Mock Spin, she can act after the apex of the secret Mock Spin 2 and continue her combo. Probably the most relevant non-Kyoko secret move out there. It can even be done with meter stocked. Secret Mock Spin 3 gives Mock Spin the height of Heavy Kick and the hit slash damage of EX. This too can be done even with meter. Ravestorm is Ayako's combo confirm tool, but it's not necessarily full service, let's say. Both the heavy kick and the EX versions won't fully connect on crouchers and leave you open for an easy punish, meaning that you can only use the light kick version if they're crouching and have to stand confirm for higher damage. EX Ravestorm can, for some reason, low profile attacks, but it's not safe to just let rip as all versions of, of Ravestorm are mad unsafe on block. Despite its shortcomings, both regular and EX Wraith Storms are important Ayako tools. Tornado Attack is literally Demon Flip, right down to the three standard options. Slide Attack is a mid that triggers if you input nothing. It's unsafe on block, but in the corner can give you a combo. Fan Shop is an overhead that if done too low to the ground causes Ayako to land and do nothing. If your opponent is respecting Tornado Attack, this becomes quite the legit high-low mix-up. Her last option is Frankensteiner, which shares the same input as Fanshop, but activates via proximity to the opponent. This means that you can option select Fanshop and Frankensteiner, and you will need to because Frankensteiner will not work on crouching opponents or opponents too deep into the corner. Spiral Dive is a one frame command grab with no whiff animation. Obviously this is crazy powerful, but on top of that, the input for this super overlaps with Mock Kick, so, if for some reason, the opponent is airborne or otherwise trying to jump out of your command grab, you will get mock spin instead and anti-air the piss out of them. FTIC, short for the fucking wicked name of Final Tornado Illusion Crisis, is a much less applicable super for Ayako. While the damage is massive, the startup and the recovery make it hard to utilize. It is possible this move can be unsafe on hit, so it's best to make sure this will kill if you have a good line on cashing out your combo. Ayako's space control is able to keep her in control of the game and push her opponent to the corner where she can start a terrifying strike throw mix up. However, her best game plan is to stay grounded, as her air options are not as great as her grounded options, air throw aside. She does not chunk the opponent for as much damage as her contemporaries. With how strong her grounded neutral tools are, you will get ample opportunities to nail the opponent enough times to end the round.
funny girl and high tops? Peak character design. Elirin is an incredibly solid, offensively minded character that has both tools to control space and tools to schmix overly cautious opponents. Between a lightning fast overhead, a command grab super, wrecker confirms, and her fire blast, she can keep herself in the driver's seat. Which is good, because when Elirin has to play defense, she's nowhere near as effective. Elirin gets a unique attack off her dashing heavy punch that has killer priority, making her able to bully a large amount of space in neutral if she sniffs out the opponent trying to make a move. She also has a standing light kick that rivals Ayakor's in terms of range and effectiveness. Speaking of light kick, her diagonal jumping light kick has so much range that it's one of the few jumping attacks that can instant overhead crouches. Elirin's guard cancels aren't terrible, but they're not amazing either. She lacks a guard cancel into her light attack, so her best option is her light kick guard cancel as that gives you standing heavy kick, which has decent range and is the most likely to score a conversion. It is kind of slow though, so for being her best option, it's still not that great. And you'll notice a theme going forward that Elirin doesn't do particularly well on defense. Elirin Fire is a blast of flame in front of her, useful for holding down mid-range approaches, as the light version is pretty safe if spaced correctly. Heavy Elirin Fire will get to knockdown, and EX Fire just hits more times for better overall damage. Elirin Mach Punch is a mash special which is terribly unsafe and pretty well not worth using. EX Mark Punch, however, is a powerful combo tool as it has an actual input instead of a mash input and scores great damage off of anything you can convert it into. This is very much worth using and is a staple in her combo extensions. Elirin Tsuten Kaku Otoshi is more of a combo tool than a reversal, despite appearances. The startup stinks, doesn't go very far, and it lacks any invincibility, so you won't be able to defend yourself with this. Ending combos and occasionally bamboozling your opponent is its main uses. EX Otoshi is at least a better reversal in the sense that it is a zero frame unblockable, but it may still be better suited for ending combos. Vibe check. Elirin Chop is a terrifying overhead that is so fast it's basically instant, completely unreactable. Not only this, but Elirin Chop is super cancelable, so if she catches you down backing, she can convert to make it hurt. On top of all that, Elirin Chop has the ability to reflect projectiles, adding some pretty great utility to her neutral and making it easily one of her best special moves. Elirin Sanranbu is a standard three-part wrecker. Really useful, as it's going to be her easiest confirm off most normals, and you can super cancel the third hit to crank up the combo damage. Elirin Smash is Elirin's lone super, but what a great super it is. A one frame command grab with fantastic range and no whiff animation means that when Elirin has the meter to put this on deck, her mix ups become terrifying. Between low confirms, a nearly instant overhead, and a super command grab with solid damage, being too stationary against Elirin will allow her to put the mix into effect. Elirin has awesome tools to bully the opponent back into the corner and then mix them into a nightmare with her scary overhead and command grab super. Where the roles are reversed, however, Elirin can really struggle as she has so few defensive options outside of betting on her zero frame unblockables. With no true reversals and slower options for her guard cancels, she needs to keep the pressure on to make sure her tools shine. It also doesn't help that she has among the lowest attack and defense values in the game, meaning she does weaker damage and bleeds harder than almost anyone other than maybe Chiho. Also, her name is actually Eleanor, she's just a weeb. Hey, you know how in most fighting games the grappler has significantly less mobility options than the rest of the cast? Well in AVG2 that isn't the case, and Jun is a monster of a character to deal with because of that. She has a sick command grab that you can get OTG combos from, a fully invincible spot dodge that can only be punished by throws, absolutely explosive damage, and she does not pay the grappler mobility tax. While she is still slower than most of the cast, Jun is powerful enough to be in the Grappler Hall of Fame without being top 1 busted and ruining the game. 
Just because Jun can move pretty fast doesn't exactly mean her normals do. She has good buttons like forward heavy punch for anti-airing, but they're often slower than you'd like. But her air normals rule. Jumping light kick will put in so much work for you, especially when you do it rising and then chain into her grappler standard body splash on jumping down heavy punch, which can cross up as you would expect. These tools help Jun assault and mix the opponent from the air, sometimes creating air chain scenarios that start on one side and end on the other side in a completely ambiguous cross up setup. Jun's guard cancels are the most powerful in the game due to a unique property her light guard cancels have. They deal damage based on the move being guard cancelled. The way this plays out is that if you light punch or light kick guard cancel a damaging move like an EX or a super, Jun can do disgusting amounts of damage by just chaining light normals after the guard cancel. This makes her defense terrifying to apply pressure on, and in case you're in a situation where you can't get a light normal guard cancel out, her heavy kick guard cancel is Kubo to Sway, which leaves her fully strike invincible. This is a Hall of Fame grappler, everyone. Earthshaker is a crazy powerful short range projectile. Jun uses this for big OTG pickups, so expect to use this a lot in extending your combos. EX Earthshaker is well worth the meter as it's an unblockable attack that hits anywhere on the floor and launches the opponent for a follow up combo if you're in the right position. Kubo to Sway is a spot dodge that's unpunishable and makes Jun fully strike invincible, with the only way to punish it being that she can be thrown during the animation. This move will absolutely blow up most zero frame reversals as you can input the Sway during Super Flash and the game will take it as a reversal. Kubota Buster is Jun's command grab and it rules. She has awesome range on this thing and can combo after it with a properly placed EX Earthshaker or even just an OTG crouching light kick. Just note that unlike every other command grab in the game, this one does have a whiff animation. Kubota Lariat is Jun's combo ender and like everything else in her kit, also slams. Lariat causes a rare hard knockdown and keeps the opponent close, guaranteeing that Jun can get an OTG pickup afterwards. The safety and efficiency is more unreliable if used in neutral, so keeping this move as a combo tool is the best thing. Kubota Shuttle is a super version of Kubota Lariat, and not only is it a perfect combo ender for Jun, but the last part of the attack is unaffected by damage scaling, which makes it do absolutely silly amounts of damage overall. For reasons unknown, this super also hits low, so it can be kept in your back pocket as a very risky but very explosive knowledge check. Kubota Special is just a super version of Jun's command grab. This does pretty good damage, but you can usually get better damage from a Kubota Buster into an EX Earthshaker combo. What this does have is one frame startup, so it may be less damaging, but it does have more utility to compensate. Jun is absolutely awesome. With her great mobility, scary aerial presence, and killer conversions, she is a grappler's dream. She can still find herself struggling with neutral against characters with better tools and faster buttons, but when Jun gets in, and she will get in, she can maul the opponent with big grabs and even bigger damage. Even if you don't normally play grapplers in fighting games, Jun is worth a spin. Kaori, known for being a problem in previous games, has returned to Variable Geo to once again be a massive fucking problem. You can't keep getting away with it! Her main kit is a very simple set of fireball and rushdown tools, but behind her simplicity lies a massive efficiency, including two zero frame unblockables, a one frame proximity unblockable, and Oh, yeah, she has an easy infinite that can be done from a variety of starters, including a guard cancel and a dive kick. Yo, you wanna learn how to do a fucking infinite? It's motherfucking light punch! Light kick! Heavy punch! Heavy kick! Kaori has an easy infinite that's literally just her light punch, light kick, heavy punch, heavy kick target combo that loops if you can successfully link a light punch after the final hit. 
Not only does this mean she can start her infinite from any jab, but she can also start it from a guard cancel light punch, dashing heavy punch into heavy kick, and most importantly, from her dive kick. Kaori's dive kick is bonkers. It hits three times on the way down and has basically no recovery. The only stipulation is that it can only be done at the apex of your jump, no earlier or later. This hardly stops it from being a dominant tool, being able to start infinite, start pressure, or even cross up. Let's get this out of the way now. To win in this matchup, you need to be chicken blocking against Kaori's dive kick. As mentioned already, Kaori can start her infinite from a guard cancel, so you want to prioritize her light punch guard cancel to make that possible. Her light kick guard cancel is nowhere near as useful, but can still offer some utility if getting just a standing jab isn't good enough to get someone off you. Their Senshu is a standard fireball. The light kick version is pretty slow and has very short recovery, which makes it a really good tool for throwing out a neutral. The heavy kick version isn't bad either, it's great for changing up the speed in a fireball war, but the light kick version is really the main source here. EX Death Senshu is a double fireball that's also a zero frame unblockable. Outside of the off chances that it can whiff in the corner, this is a crazy powerful EX due to its speed and ability to combo afterwards. Secret Death Senshu is like a buffed up heavy kick version. It deals more damage, but it builds less meter. And Kenfu is like a Tatsu, sort of. The light kick version is an overhead, but it doesn't knock down and can be punished on hit. And the heavy kick version is a mid and it's way safer, only being punishable by zero frame EXs or supers. And EX and Kenfu does sick damage, but will only fully convert on grounded combos. You won't get a full connect in juggles. Dude Entai is a proximity unblockable, because, you know, Kaori really needs one of those. With one frame startup and no whiff animation, Kaori can stick this in a lot of deadly places to catch the opponent off guard, like after her dive kick with mysteriously low recovery. On top of being a powerful tool by itself, in the corner you can get an OTG combo, and mid-screen you can super cancel into Detsuzando for big damage. Speaking of which, Detsuzando looks like just a standard Ranbu super, but was held in regard as the strongest super in the game, until pretty recently. See, it was long believed that this super had a glitch that wouldn't allow the opponent to reaction super the freeze frames, but it's only recently come to our attention that this glitch only is specific to Raimi's hurricane runes. You can respond to it otherwise, but just at a different timing than normal. We all kind of have egg on our face for not figuring this one out sooner, but AVG2 honestly has so much hidden tech that things just get lost in the shuffle all the time. Anyway, you can use this to cash out big damage whenever you want, it's really easy. Kaori does have weaknesses. Her ground buttons aren't going to set the world on fire, and her aerial buttons are strictly just okay, but outside of that, she is a demon upon the game. With great fireballs, a crouching heavy punch to stuff jumpers, a dive kick that does your taxes for you, a proximity unblockable that you can combo out of, and a motherfucking infinite, she's not broken, but she's about as close to it as you can get. You can still beat her, and your victory is not guaranteed if you pick her, but she is emphatically the best character in the game, and it won't take long to see why. Guile, but with nitroglycerin running through her veins. Raimi is a bit of a weird Guile hybrid that morphed into something else. She has a flash kick, but a regular command fireball. Guile's Solbot kick, but a Captain America-esque charging star. This leads Raimi to being less of a space-controlling zoner and more of an explosive conversion machine. She has a terrible time opening up turtlers, but instead she can wax opponents who put themselves in bad situations. Raimi has two very interesting command normals. Her forward heavy kick is Guile's Solbat kick, which allows her to crush some lows. However, it can be low profile by certain moves and punished if not spaced correctly. Her more applicable command normal is J2 Heavy Punch. While not particularly amazing in terms of hitboxes or anything, it has the unique property of being an air attack that is air unblockable. Proper usage of J2 Heavy Punch will strike fear into jumpers and chicken blockers alike. Unlike most characters, Raimi does not have a guard cancel that is an obvious pick among her group. 
Her best overall choice would be Heavy Punch Guard Cancel, as that is her Flash Kick, but you don't get a combo from that the way many other characters look for when it comes to their Guard Cancels. For combo ability, she can get a Light Kick Starter from her Light Kick Guard Cancel, which fits the bill. This gives her a more well-rounded Guard Cancel defense for either punishes or general get-off-me situations. Burning Rose is a large projectile. The Light Punch version is slow enough to follow behind for stagger pressure and space control. EX Burning Rose rules as it hits three times, giving you advantage on hit and block, and is an enabler of Raimi's combo loops. Rose Stinger is a charging attack with very peculiar attributes. The Heavy Kick version is objectively faster, stronger, and goes further, but because neither version knocks down the opponent, it is actually punishable on hit. However, this is still one of Raimi's most powerful tools because you can super cancel it on hit into EX Burning Rose, looping them until you run out of meter or cashing out with her Griffin Nail Super. This is the main tool in Raimi's highly damaging combo loops and is the groundwork for what makes this character special. EX Rose Stinger actually does less damage, but at least knocks down. That said, it's not at all that useful a way to spend meter on a character who needs meter pretty badly. Hurricane Rose is Raimi's flash kick, and while it may not look like it, it does cover a healthy amount of horizontal space. Like the majority of anti-air specials in the game, Hurricane Rose has invincibility on it until the first active frame, making it a reliable reversal and anti-air option. EX Hurricane Rose actually has worse invincibility, but gains wicked damage and can loop into itself, making it a damage dump tool instead of a guaranteed get off me option. Griffin Nail is one of the highest damage supers in the game, but like a lot of Raimi's tools, has some unique oddities. While lacking proper invincibility, it has 12 frames of projectile invincibility, so it can blow up people in a fireball war. It cannot be used in air juggles, but with Raimi's combo structure favoring keeping the opponent grounded, you can confirm into this with EX Burning Rose. Finally, Griffin Nail is air unblockable. So if the opponent chicken blocks one of Raimi's fireballs, she can guarantee a griffin nail afterwards. Raimi is a very tricky character based on a very standard archetype, which makes her one of the more unique characters to play in AVG2. Properly understanding the hows and whys of her tools can lead to her preying on unsuspecting opponents for massive damage. Her main problems are that she really needs meter to shine, and while her tools are crafty knowledge checks, they aren't particularly effective mix-ups that can open an overly defensive opponent. But if raw plays and even raw combos sound exciting, then Raimi is where you want to be. There are a few fighting games out there, like Advanced Variable Geo 2. It has a huge emphasis on aerial approaches without having air dashes, which gives it a unique sense of movement. The push and pull of zero frame unblockables offer surprisingly dynamic play, as they're monstrously powerful tools but can still be beaten by brave media attempts. And thanks to the loose juggle and OTG system, AVG2 allows for wicked combo conversions and massive combo potential generally if you have the meter to spare. The game has just entered the rollback era, and with the groundswell of interest already happening at offline tournaments, Advanced Variable Geo 2 is able to stand as a fighting game with its own identity and features multiple interesting and evocative reasons to play it competitively. As always, if you need further details or more information on the game, please visit the Super Combo Wiki we have been working on. We look forward to seeing you in bracket soon. Bracket soon.